before we get to our keynote speaker, we have um, with us um, our, um, our MP, Laura Ferris, and who is going to share with us about um, what she is, um, she can, what she can tell us about what's happening with the, um, in relations with the people with ethnic backgrounds and uh, nationalities. Um, Laura, you're there, over to you. Thank you, Alice. Um, it's so nice to see everyone, and I'm really sorry that I joined late. We've got a sort of really unpredictable evening of votes coming in, and if I'm suddenly drowned out by a bell, that's basically the siren that tells me I have to get up and move. So you'll forgive me, I hope. But um, it's a very kind of interesting moment, I think, to be talking about community, because I think the last sort of six or seven months, has revealed something, I mean, I can only talk about West Berkshire, but I do think it's happened across the entire country, but it's revealed something about community that I hadn't really thought about or reflected on for many, many years. And that was really the way that small communities, I'm talking villages, even little groups within villages, streets within our towns came together to support people and I remember the sequencing with which that happened when the really when the lockdown began first of all you'll remember back at sort of a really from about mid-march we had the big national announcements about what we were allowed to do how we would live do you remember it started with working from home then school closure and then the complete lockdown itself and it came with the national announcements then there was the whole issue of shielding and food boxes being issued from central government going to the local authorities. But within two or three weeks, it was apparent to me that a huge amount of work on the ground was being done at a sort of really micro level by leaders really who were taking on responsibility for 30, 50, sometimes 100, sometimes more people in their community who for whatever reason couldn't leave the house and were completely reliant on the kindness of strangers really and one or two of the conversations I had with volunteers that really surprised me was people saying things like I now go and see a lady who actually only lives four or five doors down from me and I'd never spoken to her before and I found out that she's a widow and she's told me she has more conversations with people in this area than she has done for 10 years and I also had volunteers saying things to me like even when life returns to normal and I go back to work, I don't want to stop going to visit this person or that person that I've got to know. And one of the things that I've been thinking about, and I'm looking at Mark and sort of some of the other community leaders here who probably would have more of a sense of it than me, is how, as we sort of go forward, we keep those community synapses alive. And I'm not sure I have any big ideas. I think it's a matter for discussion and this is a good forum for it. Obviously, people will return to work and school and the grind and churn of ordinary life will resume. But something very special happened that doesn't have to be contingent on dropping off medicine or a Tesco delivery. And I hope that that sort of sense of connection is something that will work really hard in West Berkshire to retain. But the second thing I want to touch on, because I know how important this is to Alice, and I know what I know what she means by the word belonging. Was something else that really, um, I think, exploded actually um, around June was the whole Black Lives Matters movement, and the way that we came to it in West Berkshire. I thought again was a really sort of special um, event because. I think, I think you'll remember that the weekend before in London, it had got ugly, there had been violence, there had been policemen punched. And, you know, some people felt, I think, kind of skeptical of the whole idea. But my husband and I went to the one in Victoria Park, and he still talks to me about things that people said that afternoon in Victoria Park and presentations that he heard and, and things that recalibrated his way of thinking about some of these issues and mine too. And so it was the start of a conversation, I think, that I know Alice is very, very committed to continuing. And I know that she's very alive to where disparities exist and wants, I think, politicians like me 
to focus on them. Is that fair? I think Alice is nodding. <laughs> okay, so I have to tell you what Alice wants me to talk about and I'll just do it. I'll do it quite briefly. Some of it you'll already know and some of it um, you won't. And that is, I think, the disparate impact of the virus. And it is absolutely right to say that when you look at the mortality rate, and I have to, st I actually have to start by saying something that I hope is, you know, not, it's not diminishing it in any way, but it is just a true fact. We in West Berkshire were reasonably mildly hit by the first wave of the virus. When you look at the statistics of the hospitalizations and the deaths, they are very low relative to some other areas. Now that of course doesn't mean that we're not highly vulnerable in the future, that you know, we couldn't have a catastrophic outcome at the end of all this. But it is, I think, quite important to recognize um, that it didn't hit us that hard. And I have to say, I think we are very law abiding because the lockdown worked. I remember speaking to some GPs at Strawberry Hill and they were comparing us with parts of Oxfordshire and they said West Berkshire has done really well. But where we look at the national picture and we look at the impact of the virus, it is absolutely true to say that it had a disproportionate effect on different ethnicities. And actually, I don't like using sort of blanket language, but it is true to say that if you look at, say, Afro-Caribbean communities or Bangladeshi communities or, or Pakistani communities, and you compare them with white British communities, on every occasion, you will see a higher mortality rate. And even when you adjust for age and gender and the geography of where those people live, they don't explain the differences. And one of the things, we've had a debate on this in Parliament, one of the things that might explain the differences are, for example, how many of those people are doing frontline jobs as key workers and were put in the line of fire more than other people? Or how many of those people were living in socially deprived conditions where they were not you know, adequately protected? And I think those are the issues which this has begun to sort of touch on and there is a government review going on and I don't want to preempt its outcomes, but of course it links into much more fundamental questions of fairness and, and whether people were unduly exposed or not protected, particularly in the early days. And I know that that's something that Alice is very interested in and I respect sort of the urgency with how she's kind of pressed this issue on me. Alice has asked me to talk about where we are in West Berkshire in terms of going into the next stage. And I have to be absolutely honest with you, there is a shortage of testing in West Berkshire. I've raised it in the chamber with Matt Hancock. Uh, I've raised it with him outside of the chamber as well this week. Um, but I looked at the average numbers of tests that have been happening in this constituency. And over the last seven days, we have averaged 272 tests a day. And that's nothing like as high as it once was. So I will be pressing the government to make more tests available. And I know the frustration of the people who've contacted me to, to raise this as an issue, because although the rate is still extremely low in West Berkshire, I understand and you, you don't need any persuading for me to, to know that, that our best route to seeing off a second wave of the virus is going to be by improving the accessibility of testing. So to the extent anyone wanted to raise it, um, please know that I'm on it. But if you would like to email me or raise something that I should take up differently, you can do. And I you know, would be very happy to do so. Um, and I think I'll just close by saying, you know, Alice is a really important um, voice around sort of belonging and making sure that, you know, every group has their voice reflected. And I think, as I said, I just touched on, I know that Alice has been very focused on the disproportionate impact of COVID. And I, I, I you know, I do expect what, that when there are more conclusive results, there will be another parliamentary debate. I think we should meet again and discuss what that means, if not for West Berkshire, what it means at a national level. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Laura. Um, just to also share with you all what Laura has been sharing, um, at the West Berkshire Health and Wellbeing Board, um, the the um, ethnic minority report is being presented and it's been looked at by everybody. So, you know, um, ethnic um, minorities are important and, you know, we should embrace and we also should work together to make 
this uh, disparity closer and, you know, so that we um, can improve the health inequalities. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Laura. I do appreciate 